Out of landing's going down. Copy that. Copy that. This is an audio slate for dive H1924. UTC time is 140443, mark. Squid. Oh, yeah. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. My mic was off. Hi. Good morning. <laughs> I'll stop five zero. You guys ready for control? Wait for that. Yep. We're ready. Okay, go ahead and bump it. You've got a deck to one off comps. Copy. All stations, uh, Captain, going off radio comms. Copy. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's try for 25 until we get to the zone. Morning. Top of the morning. Good morning again. <laughs> <laughs> Just 
so many little floaties. Yeah, lots, lots of things today, this morning. Is everybody's morning drink of choice pretty much coffee? I feel like I'm the only one that just drinks like hot water with a lemon in it. I can't drink coffee on the ship for some reason. Um, I'm on tea with lemon as well. The coffee's a little. <laughs> I don't even do tea. It's just like straight up water with lemon and nothing in it. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever have caffeine? Um, the soda count? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if soda counts as tea. <laughs> It counts as caffeine, and when I'd have one like once every six months or something. Oh wow! Yeah, I'm not really a soda. I don't like carbonated things. You you function off zero caffeine most of the, the time. Day to day. Wow. When I'm home, I drink like a green smoothie every morning, and so that gives me a pep. Oh my! They're good and healthy for you. You are <laughs> such. Like I didn't drink any coffee in college or anything. Anytime I went wow. to like the Starbucks, they would, you know, get the cup ready and I'd be like, I just want a muffin. <laughs> and they'd be like, okay. oh, okay. Yeah, just a muffin. Thanks. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I don't know. Wait, are we talking this one or this one? That is Herc Gooey. All right. Hey, I'll show you a quick style points thing with the manip. Oh, yeah. So, um, when you turn the blue button on, uh -huh. watch the jaws. Okay. They open up, right? Yeah. So I'm going to turn it off. If you hold this down, yeah. when you press the blue button, oh, they don't open. That's convenient. So, okay, cool. another style points thing is if you put it, if you store the jaws this way, they're more likely to open when you hit the blue button. Gotcha. And then I'll, I can scratch up the, the hydraulic ram. Okay. So it's nice to stow, stow, store, whatever, them this way as one line of defense. Oh. And then the next one is hold this every time you press or unpress the blue button. That's cool. Okay. Sounds great. Thanks. Yeah. And it's not as important. Like right now, the jaws won't hit anything. Yeah. But it's more important when uh, they're in this orientation and they're going to smack all the, the bits in there. Ugh. Yeah. Just kind of wears stuff out prematurely, so. That makes sense. Cool. We'll do. It's actually, oh, I'm thinking about things as I'm doing them. Um, so if I have the grip closed and I don't touch anything and I press the blue button, the jaws will back off a little bit. Okay. And so every time I hit the blue button, I'm holding the jaws closed. Okay. Cool. Regardless of stop or start. Awesome. Sounds great. Blue button jaws closed. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know you were there. I'm sorry. All right. I went for the stretch and I almost punched Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know it's a good stretch. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta get that in at this hour, especially. <laughs> Green smoothies are good. Thank you to that viewer. And they're good <laughs> for you. Make sure you put celery in it, <laughs> it's really good for you. <laughs> Celery juice is very good for your body. 
So if you were at home drinking mm -hmm. a green smoothie, would you also drink your hot water with lemon? I drink my hot water with lemon first, and then I have a green smoothie. Okay. Mm -hmm. How are you doing without your green smoothies? Not well. <laughs> um, <laughs> not well. <laughs> but <laughs> the the hot water and lemon is 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 good too. <laughs> good. Slid in withdrawal for a little while when I first got on the boat. <laughs> it's all right. I'll make me a large one when I get home. <laughs> Let's see who we have with us today. Ireland, Norway, Canada. Oh, wait, it moved. Okay. Finland, Australia, the Netherlands, the UK. I talked to a class in the UK the other day. They were very, very sweet. They had great questions. And the United States. And nice. Ger Gurney? No, no, no. I'm not pronouncing that right. Guernsey, I think. All right, I think it's time for some slow action. All right. Thanks. Maybe slightly faster than that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> You're getting reoriented. I'm just bugging you. <laughs> Guernsey. That's what it is. Awesome. Currency. This is technically our 10th dive, ninth or 10th, we count. <laughs> King George, North, last east, uh, okay. 10th full dive. 10th full dive. Good morning from the viewer in Vermont. Thanks for joining us. What's up, Vermont? <laughs> Vermont Ooh. representing. Good morning, Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this little, these, what are these? Squid? No. Okay, they, now, okay, now it seems like I'm making it up, but I promise <laughs> they were there. <laughs> I believe you, Annabelle. There was something there. Little, like... Yeah, oh, those there we go. Oh. <gasps> oh, oh, they're squid? Oh, my goodness. Yep. They're so squid. Cute. Oh. Cute. So cute. Look at that. Oh. <gasps> there are so many of them. Oh, baby squid. Thanks for that zoom, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> squid zoom. Squid zoom. Stephen, do you have all the different photos? kinds of zooms on your resume? Like squid zoom, coral <laughs> zoom. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Shrimp zoom. <laughs> They're all different buttons on this controller. Right. <laughs> Just like every single one. The nuance. Yeah. <laughs> we definitely had a wiggle zoom. Oh, yeah, wiggle zoom. Yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Snap zoom, partial zoom. <gasps> that one go, go, oh go, my go. You got a flopper zoom? Oh. <laughs> flopper um, zoom. No, I guess not. Rats. Sometimes you gotta know when the hardest part about zooming is when you you don't zoom. Oh man. <laughs> you have a don't zoom button? 
<laughs> yeah. Because I got to press something. Right. <laughs> no, just, we're just getting in here. Is that the hold em button? I sometimes ask for a hold on a sec there button. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's what I was going for. If you're wondering, is there any particular life form or geologic feature we're looking for on today's dive? Um, I think the priorities are still pretty similar. Looking for rocks for aging and um, yeah. assessing biodiversity. We still have a wish list, even though I think we've crossed a, a good amount of things off. That wish list. Um, yeah. Also looking for our rocks for microbial That's analysis. That's right. Microbial analysis is important. We're doing that. Are those the lasers in bubble cam? Yeah. Wow, I don't think I've noticed that before. Yeah. You can see the offset. The bubble's not totally actually central on yeah. the porch. Oh, there's something else. Oh, wait. Well, maybe that was also a squid. Ah, uh, there it is. Look at the bend in that laser now. Whoa. Oh, oh no longer look at that. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. I've never, <laughs> never seen that before. Yeah, you don't want to cut through the frame now. Yeah, careful. Yeah. Good morning from South Australia. Thanks for joining us. What's the weather like? It's been pretty calm lately. We've been having some actually pretty sunny weather, pretty calm seas for the most part. How were the swells that launched today? I don't know. It felt I mean, dark. I know it was dark, but <laughs> yeah. I got getting up this morning, I was like, oh, we're moving a bit. Yeah. We were on the roll for we a bit were, there, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Woke yeah, me I up at 2.30, I think. Mm-hmm. Yep. So just peeking at the dive plan, looks like we're going to the very top of the seamount that we were on yesterday. Yeah, I think we're diving near the summit. Exciting. If Let's you were to zoom in on the map, there's actually two summits separated by a little saddle. Ooh. We're going to the north one. Cool. Nice. Coming up from the east side. Yeah, like Lynette, can you zoom out a little bit more on high pack yeah. to, so folks can see the other part of the seamount? It looks really steep where we're going to yes. set down. Ah, okay. But <laughs> There's the chief. <laughs> we're not the chief, no. Okay, Someone thanks, else. Lynette. Yep. Okay, I think we're good to go. So okay. yesterday we were okay. here? Try 25 no, okay. again? We no. were much further south. Okay. On it. We were down. Um, what uh, you're looking okay. at is just this. We were way I down see. here. Okay. We were as far away from our dive site as we were from Argonaut. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Good morning from Canada. Uh, what is Hercules maximum death? depth, 4,000 meters, but I don't think he's ever been all the way down to 4,000, but pretty close. <laughs> Have
have any meteorites been uncovered? I don't, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> From the deep. <laughs> that would be cool, though. Not that I know of, anyway. I feel like we may have gra looked for meteorites. Really? Them. I that's don't know cool. why. We had looked for them in other cruises, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Did we find any? I don't know that we got to know that. Mm. We just got a bunch of rocks. I wasn't on the cruise, but... Gotcha. They got a bunch of rocks, and they sent them away to be analyzed, and ah. maybe the people on that cruise heard, but I did not. Mm. Twenty-seven is fine. Twenty-eight is fine. Do you know this got tightened? It feels, yeah, it feels better. Less worse. Less worse. So some of our scientists were up very late last night analyzing mm -hmm. samples in the lab. Ah, just jumped to 30. Did you guys get a little bit of sleep there, Annabelle and Beth? <laughs> no, not much. Oh, no, uh, I wasn't in the lab last night. It was a lab party. Uh, it was not <laughs> possible to process rocks. <laughs> it was busy in there. How long yes. did it take to process the samples from yesterday's dive? Do we know? Uh, I don't think it took terribly long. That's but good. Still, uh, there was a lot to see and do, yeah. and I think because we came up at <laughs> midnight. Uh, yeah. No, it no, was no, 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 eight, eight, eight. We eight, came eight. up at eight p.m., and so there were a lot of folks awake and wanted to see things, which is always great. Yeah. Yeah. We had a nice variety between the geological samples, the microbial rock samples and then some of our biological samples we had a nice little um smattering of things to see in the lab nice mm -hmm. including that sea star that we collected mm -hmm. in the sea pen like mm -hmm. right before the end of our shift oh yeah that's right that mm -hmm. we slurped yeah. I was really surprised the sea pen came up completely intact with that slurp. I know yeah I was really impressed. I was too. I wasn't sure how it was going to fare with uh, with the slurp yeah. and the way that like we had to kind of yeah. I think that's why it the, maybe came up. In, yeah. Maybe so. Like, I think that's why it came up intact. So we kind of got to the quote unquote root of it a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So that was great. Are you going to so tell them about great the cucumber? driving by Trevor and sampling? So. What was the thing that smelled like a cucumber? Pardon? The thing that smelled like a cucumber? Smelled like a cucumber. Oh, that was the primnoid. So we had a primnoid in the lab, mm -hmm. uh, one that was, I don't think has been identified in terms of species, okay. but um, it distinctly smelled like cucumber. Yeah. Really? Yes. Yeah, like a, and it was confirmed by multiple like, people. Like fresh cucumber? Yes, yes. fresh sliced cucumber. I'm not really sure that what. That's interesting. Yeah. What chemical that the animal was giving off that made it smell like that? But uh, we we each took a turn. We were like confirmed <laughs> cucumber, each so it wasn't just one nose. <laughs> well, that must have been a great break from drying sponge, fresh cucumber. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was kind of yeah. fun. <laughs> have to look back at our notes about uh, what they said about that prim no -id. Maybe I can poke around here just a second. Good morning, San Jose. Thanks for joining us. Uh, for the viewer wondering how deep we are going today, we're going to 2,000 meters, so quite sh more shallow uh, than yesterday, but it's on the same seamount. Um, the 
depths that we're going um, are in the update on the nautiluslive.org sort of homepage. If you're wondering. Good morning from Athens, Greece. Thanks for joining us. Folks tuning in from all over the world on a, what, Saturday morning? Is it still in Greece? Yeah. Let me check. Which Greece is on my bucket list. For sure. Some point in life. Did y'all say that one of your samples smelled like cucumber? <laughs> it did indeed. Are you just not, you just not registering? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, wait, what? Yeah, so the primnoid that we sampled last night, brought up into the lab, we were measuring it, taking our photos, doing our um, description, and somebody is like, it smells like cucumber in here. Where? And so then we were trying to track it down. Sure enough, it was the sample and then we each took a turn smelling to confirm, <laughs> but it was the distinct cucumber smell coming from our primnoid. What wow. is that? Type of coral or any Some type of coral? Some type yeah. of, yeah, chemical that the, the animal gives off. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know if it might be like a defense mechanism kind of thing or if that, you know, I, ca I can't smell things underwater, but um, yeah. Cool. It was fascinating. Speaking Very unexpected. of weird animal smells, <laughs> um, I have another porcupine fun fact. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Yes. With the porcupine, porcupine facts. Bring it. So porcupines give off kind of this like pungent, musky odor. Mm -hmm. um, but the molecule that's responsible for that, if you have the mirror image of it, Instead of smelling pungent and musky, it smells like coconut. Huh. <laughs> That's cool. Can you can you uh, explain what you mean by the mirror image of a molecule? Um, oh, I know the word for that. Yeah, it's like the chirality, chirality. of a molecule. Oh. The, the way that the atoms are connected. You can have one orientation and you can have the mirror image of it. Isn't that what They're Splenda opposite. is, or or what's the imitation sugar that's the opposite chirality of actual oh, sugar? I have no it's idea. Not it has no calories. So is it, it like a spatial thing? Oh. Like yes. Yeah. Imagine your two hands, right? Yeah. So for instance, if whatever side chain causes a certain smell, if it's in the other orientation. Oh. Like that. So it's yeah, it's spatial. So not all molecules will have it. Like H2O does not have an opposite because it's flat. Or even some 3D yeah. molecules, they're symmetric, so they can't have a handedness. But I think you see it most often in organic ones. Is that right? Yeah. So carbon can have four bonds. So it makes a tetrahedra. You have one going up and three going in <laughs> that kind of orientation. <laughs> um, it's easier to draw so it. So multiple axes is what you're saying, yeah. or planes, multiple planes. I can draw it on the telestrator. I will try. You gotta be fast because they disappear. <laughs> Is there a way to turn that off? Yeah, there's a way to turn it off. Straight. Uh, give me a second. Because I'm confused. Like I would just picture like turn flipping, like looking at it from the other side. It would be. So it's not the chirality of the porcupine. It's the chirality of the scent molecules themselves, yes. right? Uh, so, like, I'm getting flashbacks yeah. from organic chem. It's weird that that. <laughs> <laughs> you one of those like subscription <laughs> emails where it's like porcupine facts daily promise. or something. Uh, I wish. I wish <laughs> I had that. That would be amazing. Okay, I'm trying to draw this here. <laughs> so <clears throat> it's hard to do in 2D when it's a 3D <laughs> thing. But so carbon can have <clears throat> four bonds. You can have like one going up, and then the three at the bottom kind of look like a tripod. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then let's say you have a molecule, uh, 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 an active group on one of those tripods. If you were to move it in orientation, it like for instance, faces out versus faces in, mm. that can change the properties. So I don't know if I can erase, hold on. Whoop. We might need to break up the ball and stick for yeah. uh, Steve. Here's green, okay. 
Right. So I for always struggle with chemistry. It's okay. Maybe I just do it again. So now, if you put that molecule on this side, or this uh, functional group on this side, it might have a different smell. Interesting. Um, yeah, I remember. Trevor, what, what you were talking about is very similar. So sugars are several carbon molecules attached in a ring. So each one of these little things is a carbon mm -hmm. molecule. And they have functional groups that stick off the side. And in sugar, like most sugars you know, they might, these functional groups might be oriented in one way. And then on uh, like a fake sugar, they would be oriented in a different way. Okay. And because of that branching pattern, uh, the enzymes that act on the sugars treat okay. them differently. Okay. Oh. But still tastes sweet to our taste buds? Yeah. Cool. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for the Kim lesson. Yep. So That's what I went to college for, <laughs> chemistry. Cool. She's like, I got gotcha. you. Give me one second. <laughs> okay, now I guess I got to ask a follow-up question. Coconut. Yeah. Coconut. Is the other molecule, does it smell like coconuts, or is it the actual molecule that comes out of coconuts? As far as I know, it just smells like coconuts. Okay. Yeah. Similar to, but not the same as, the yeah. coconut molecule. I'm just checking if this is actually goes away. Is porcupine musk like yes. different than mm. other animal musk? Because a, so a lot of mammals smell kind of like musky. A lot of mink musk is used in perfume. Hmm. Which That's is true. I could believe Weird. that, yeah. Yeah, seems unnecessary. There's that like beaver Sorry. scent that is used to be used as like artificial vanilla flavoring. Really? What? Beaver yeah. scent? Castor oil or something? Yeah, castor That's from oil. Beavers? Oh. Yeah. Beavers are the source of castor oil? Yes. I did not know. That's probably why well, it I thought it was a, that, like a bean. Hmm? I thought it was a bean. They have like a castor glands, I oh, think. Oh, no. Yeah. We've been misled. I did not know that. What? That's no why way. it's That's a crazy. very strong taste of castor oil. Yeah. It was and never fun. And there's the ambergris, right, which was the... Original. That was the whale one, right? Yeah, it's whale. Did not know that. Okay. Caster. Oh, for the viewer wondering about the depths, I'm realizing now you're probably talking about Grafana. Um, so if you go on Nautilus Live and go to the right, there's a panel that says sort of technology, and it has um, wind speed and other numbers. Um, and if you go down to more data, that will take you to Grafana, and that'll give you Herx depth and um, oxygen and a lot of other different stats on the dive. Hmm. Well, thank you for the porcupine yeah. uh, information. And, and the beaver fact, I didn't know that. I have a much less cool porcupine fact. Yeah. <laughs> They're all going to be cool we're, to me. We're making up for lost time. We didn't get porcupine <laughs> facts on our first, you know, seven dives or whatever. So <laughs> um, they, Lynette, correct me if I'm wrong, but they're, oh my gosh, it's so early. What are their pointy things called? Spine. Thank you. Quills. 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 Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> their quills are hollow so they can float. Yes. Like the porcupine. Really? And they're good I would swimmers. love to see a floating yeah. porcupine. How often do porcupines end up in water? I mean, I do know. they actively try and seek out swimming, or do they just happen to fall in the water <laughs> and then float? <laughs> Boop. I don't know. <laughs> Lynette, any any insight in our uh, why porcupines? Swimming. Um, yeah. yeah. So I think I could be wrong here, but I think. That, okay, so like a lot of herbivores, they have a salt drive, uh, especially in the late winter, spring, early summer, um, they crave sodium. Mm -hmm. And I think for porcupines that live in really remote environments, a source of sodium for them is in like sea plants. Well, not not see aquatic um, yeah aquatic plants um and so they 
swim around to find those things. Huh, okay. That's why you see moose in swamps and ponds a lot because oh. they're getting those aquatic plants. Oh, makes sense. Mm. Huh. So, what? but you say in remote areas, is it because they go for just like roadside salt if they are in a cold weather? Yeah, so they'll, they'll like seek out whatever is easy. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the time, like, some well, sometimes they are found on the side of roads in the spring and they're eating the salt um, from salting the roads. There's also, sometimes they chew buildings because plywood, the adhesive, oh. has a lot of sodium mm. in it for some reason. Um, yeah. Probably other things as well. Yeah. Probably. Is today the day that you tell us why you know so much about porcupine? No. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Save it for the final time. <laughs> we'll learn that later this afternoon. It's not an email subscription to, to porcupine facts. We've narrowed it down that far. <laughs> so, Luna and Steven, why do so many animals like seek out sodium in their diet? Is that... Is that a, that might uh, be a I mean, I think in our bodies, like we need, we can get dehydrated if we don't have salt, which sounds counterintuitive, but I think like w water follows, I don't know, this is the way it was explained to me, uh, but that water like kind of follows salt and you can drink a lot of water, but if you have zero salt in your body, it's not going to get where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of just part of our mammalian chemistry, I guess. Mm. Yeah, I think you need sodium for, like, nerve function, like, your heart beating and all of that, right? Mm. Like, if you ever get, um, sodium if you ever get like, weak channels. and you feel like, oh, I need to eat something, like, you ever get, like, a little shaky, you feel like you need to eat, like, maybe I'm dehydrated, but you drink water, it's like, it might be that you have, your, your salt is low, your sodium is low. Oh. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's part of that sodium-potassium pump, right, that uh, drives ATP? Oh, yep. Yep, that sounds yeah, right. I, I remember that. Something like that. Yeah, so you have to have a certain osmotic pressure, mm -hmm. right, to move things in and out of your in, cells. Yep, across the membranes, yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, a lot of herbivores in the winter, their diet is super limited, so they get sort of sodium deficient over the winter, and mm. so their salt drive in the spring is the strongest. Someone's wondering that, you know, in the past we've talked about sponges having a strong smell when they're being processed and dried, and was wondering, could you elaborate a little bit on said smell? Does it have a particular smell that we can pinpoint to anything that we... It smells like decay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, that was to and the point. The <laughs> yeah, the Is ocean, the o <laughs> decay, something decaying in the ocean, <laughs> of the ocean. It smelled a little fishy to me. <laughs> that all makes sense. I worked in a lab for a little while, and um, there was a group studying sponges, put some sponges in a drying oven, kind of forgot about it. <laughs> um, like, kind of forgot about it for a couple weeks, and so did I. Oh. And uh, I've never smelled so anything so terrible as uh, rotting sea sponge when I open that oven. Oof. I, oh. Yikes. Yeah. I, I cannot even imagine, based on the way the lab smelled after just a few days of that. Yeah. Wow. I don't know that that oven was ever the same, <laughs> <laughs> despite all of the cleaning. I was like, is there a deep cleaning process? <laughs> so to get rid of the oven? <laughs> just throw the whole oven away. Get a new one? I wish, <laughs> but no, I mean, those ovens are expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> turns out. Mm. Someone sent in a porcupine fact. You guys <laughs> want to hear? Yeah. <laughs> yes. They, <laughs> uh, they said additional fun porcupine fact is that the North American porcupine 
distributional range in Texas has expanded uh, since the beginning of the 20th century. Cool, didn't know that. That's awesome. Erythizon dorsatum. I think that's how you uh, pronounce that. Yeah, I'm I should mention that all of my porcupine facts are North American porcupine facts. Ah, uh, what was the species you just mentioned? North American. Oh, okay. Uh huh. Can we guess why you know porcupine facts? <laughs> sure. Do you have a pet porcupine? I wish that would be amazing. Does someone in your family just love porcupines a lot, and growing up they shared it with you? No. Dang. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, but I'm not gonna say. You know? I do. Oh. <laughs> do you know, Steven? Yes. Uh. How does everyone else know? What? I know. This is a secret. It's what? Everyone no knows. You How do we get left out the loop? It's a long cruise. How do we yeah. get left out the porcupine loop? Come up, you know. Um, isn't there something about they have like really strong anti? bacterial properties for when they impale themselves with their own quills or something. Yeah, their, <laughs> their <laughs> quills do have like antibiotic properties. For just them or for anything they put? For anything? Yeah. I think like one of the thoughts is because they are clumsy and like fall out of trees <laughs> and oh maybe goodness. impale themselves yeah. sometimes um, that it doesn't really harm them. But they're barbed. Ah. You don't want to get them in your skin. They are barbed, yeah. Oh my gosh. Hedgehogs aren't barbed, are they? I don't think. know anything about hedgehogs. <laughs> I don't even know if they're related. <laughs> are hedgehogs rodents? I don't know. I. Uh, Let's I go back know. to porcupines here. And there's the <laughs> I have to know now. The, the second largest rodent in the United States, continental United States, as far as I know. In. North America, right? In North America. There you go. Yeah. Second anybody, largest. Anybody know the first? No. I do. Wait, what's the question? Sorry. What's, uh, so porcupines are the second largest rodent in North America. Oh, what what's the first largest? First largest rodent. Well, sorry. Second largest native rodent. Uh, native rodent. Don't tell us yet. Give us a second. <laughs> we didn't get there they go. <laughs> <laughs> there they are. Amazing. I don't know. Just tell us. No, 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 we're guess. still guessing. Okay, it guess. was mentioned. It's already come up today. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, it came up today. Yeah. Yep. What the largest rodent? Yeah. Is that what we're guessing? Wait, we we talked America. about it. Native. What have we talked about today? Moose. We've <laughs> talked about a beaver. <laughs> Not a rodent. Capital. Not there a rodent. There you go. Beaver. Beaver. You got it. Yeah, beaver. Ding, ding, ding. A beaver is considered a rodent. I it didn't is. know that. Oh. Yep. I love their tails. <laughs> There's like. There's definitely like a range of rodent sizes that affects their grossness. Like too small is kind of cute. Like little <laughs> little mice, kind of cute. <laughs> it's it's fine. You can have them as pets. Small rats can be pets, all right. Like we'll let it pass. But then there's like a mid-size range that includes like <laughs> like Large dock rats. rats and nutria and like yeah, all nutria are invade are like kind of non-native but they are in the u.s yes right? they yeah. are non-native yeah i wonder if they're i think i wonder if they're bigger than porcupines they are like this big Ugh. and oh, i wow. don't like them i saw one in uh, portland <laughs> <laughs> what about muskrat yeah, yeah what bayou. about muskrats oh, don't do get as big they're gross mm. they're cute i don't know somebody <laughs> google muskrat i'm not spying on your screen you can spy <laughs> on my screen uh, I'm not spying, you're spying. Medium sized oh, semi aquatic oh, rodent. Yeah. Yep, they're terrible. Don't like. What? Really? Oh. People oh, also muskrat? ask yeah. are muskrats, muskrats good cool. for anything? Like yes, they <laughs> are. <laughs> Somebody's wondering what a nutria is. I also hadn't heard a of that. Nutria is like a beaver like muskrat like yeah. rodent that comes, I believe, from South America, but it ended up in the States and is. Yeah. Now lives in Mississippi apparently and, and Oregon. Louisiana. Oh. People in Louisiana oh. eat them. Whoa. Ooh. Which oh. Sure. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're an invasive species not? and you can eat them, you should eat them. You should eat them, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> They're very high in protein and low in fat and healthy to eat. Uh, according to Google. Go. Yeah. Go. I have some uncles and stuff that eat very various things yeah. in the country so uh -huh. i guess i probably shouldn't be surprised yeah. i guess i would try to decide look at the water source that it made its home in <laughs> oh 
Yeah, that's one of the greatest things. If it was like a drainage ditch, I'd Louisiana. be like, no, nah, pass. But <laughs> if it was like a wild pond, I'd go, maybe I'd go for it. Swampy bayou. Swampy. Mm, yeah. So it was clean, yeah. it, it, you know, from, I don't know. Yeah. Oh. Well cooked. Yeah. So yeah, the, <laughs> the rodent scale, like medium-sized rod rodents, kind of gross, but then you start getting bigger, oh. like past that, like muskrat, maybe, or Muskrat beaver. is great. Maybe what? Or hedgehog. You eat maybe what? Maybe what? Maybe. What, what is your scale? What are you talking about? I don't, it's like a curve. So you're telling me a, a baby oh. beaver is cute, an adult beaver is cute, <laughs> but an adolescent <laughs> beaver is not cute. <laughs> um, like okay, that'd be true for we most species. Clarifiers, full grown rodents at their like max size. If they're small, they're cute. If they're big, they're cute. If they're somewhere in the middle ground, we're all like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I've also seen uh, beavers in England, which are a different species. The Eurasian oh. beaver. Hmm. Different. The what beaver? I believe it's called the Eurasian beaver. Eurasian as beaver. As in Europe and Asia. Yeah. Huh. Somebody in Australia said they don't have porcupines, but a fun fact about echidnas is that they can reach up to 2.3 kilometers per hour. Wow. <laughs> Speedy. <laughs> that sounds faster than a porcupine. I'd say. That's cute. So we don't have porcupine in North Carolina, but we do have muskrats. I have a muskrat story for you. Okay. Ooh. Give us the muskrat story. So when I was a kid, um, well, I'm from North Carolina first to start off, and we get occasional snows. Doesn't usually stick around, but this particular winter, we had a particularly cold winter, um, and so our local pond froze over. And uh, as kids, we like to roam around this pond. Of course, all kids are attracted to things like that. It seems like so anyway we were tromping around this pond in the snow and it was frozen we had our little dachshund dog uh with us one of those little you know long short squat dogs and uh she apparently saw something jumped through the ice swam under the ice we could see her of course we were like terribly alarmed as children were screaming um and we could see a muskrat she was swimming underneath the ice chasing a muskrat in our local pond. Oh my goodness. It's um, terrifying. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Not sure, like, A, if she would actually encounter the muskrat, or B, if she would be able to find her way back yeah. to the hole in which she broke through the ice to oh go chase this muskrat. Gosh. So we're screaming, 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 and we could see them, like, chasing underneath the ice on the pond. Oh my gosh. Oh. And amazingly enough, dogs, like, comes back to the hole where she popped out uh, into the ice and pops back out um, of the ice. I don't know where the muskrat, oh I think the muskrat gosh. was fine. We continued to see muskrat later on in the season, but amazingly enough, our dog came back. That's crazy. That's wow. and terrifying. Was she like shivering really so wet? Like that's yeah. cold. That is cold. I would have like grabbed it down. <laughs> like, get in here. Yeah. What's wrong with you? I love the, the the brain of a dog just no thought for consequences. No thought. Yeah, zero. Gosh. I mean, these are not the smartest creatures, right? The Action first, ask questions later. Yeah. I mean, this. Yeah. It's like All right, let's go slow again. Okay. Yeah, my cat would never. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he is way too. <laughs> the first little bit. Yeah. Slow down for the way too cautious. But I sincerely wish that we also had porcupine now, knowing all kinds of facts about porcupines and how clumsy they are. Slow. It's very slow. They have poor vision. Yeah. So how does a porcupine still exist? I mean, I know it has quills, but like when you talk about these things, <laughs> right, they've got all these broken bones. They fall out of trees. <laughs> They're slow. It has you know, almost like no natural predator. I love it. It's the quills, man. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's just astounding that this you could be as clumsy as you want when nobody wants to eat you. Animal still exists, <laughs> and it's just a bumbling. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No natural predators. Does anything eat it? Humans. Like, humans. Um, yeah. So I think it used to be illegal to kill porcupines because they were considered like a survival food, because <laughs> they're huh. slow and 
depending on the region, relatively abundant. So if you're like stranded in the woods, lost in the woods, like it's an animal that is relatively easy to catch. Also not that hard to find. Yeah. Um, but there is uh, one natural predator anyway. Fishers are no. professional oh. porcupine killers. Oh, interesting. But that is about it. What is a fisher? A fisher like cat. The, it's like a badger it's a cat? thing, oh. isn't it's it? It's called a fisher cat, but it's, it's not like a even weasel. Not, nothing it's like a cat. It's a muscalid. Never oh, heard it's of a it. It's a big weasel. Wow. And they have horrible screams. I was at the park the other day when somebody had their pet oh. ferret out on a leash. Oh my As god. As one does. As one does. <laughs> Just side note. What? <laughs> Fishers are strong weak cats. Oh, what on a, oh, uh, yeah, they swear that's what she said. A, f a, a weasel on a leash? A weasel on a wait, wait, wait. A ferret on ferret, a ferret on my a mind, leash. they're the same animal. Oh my gosh. Like a body harness or like just a leash? No, just like a little leash. Huh. <laughs> I saw someone in Central Park with a chicken on a leash. What? <laughs> <laughs> wait, in never. Central Park? <laughs> Central Park. <laughs> of all places. How do you put a chicken on a leash? Like, I mean, honestly. You don't walk a chicken around Central Park. <laughs> apparently you do. <laughs> apparently you do. <laughs> you do anything in such a way. So did it have a harness? No, she was like carrying it with the leash on it. Just like holding it in her hand. Not mm. not actually letting it run around. I don't know, maybe it ran around. But like with a clear harness around the neck in her arm. So a chicken does not necessarily have a very large head. How did that collar stay on? I have no idea. Okay, I have so many questions. <laughs> I did too, and they were left unanswered. <laughs> huh. Okay. All right. I have Earth, a sloth Earth's fact that's really interesting. Pets. Which I love sloths. I think they're very Tiger cute. Sloths. Hmm. A sloth's metabolism is so slow they can starve to death with their stomach full of food. Damn. Oh, <laughs> And then I was trying really to funny. read. <laughs> says if the if the body temperature drops too low, wait, 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 wait. If the environmental temperature drops low, so does the body temperature of the sloth. If it drops too low, then the bacteria and microbes die. In this situation, the sloth can eat the same amount of leaves as normal, but can starve to death on a full stomach because they can't extract any nutrients. There you go, microbiomes. Wow. Shout out to the microbes. <laughs> This is why sloths are amazing. They're like, just keep me warm and full of food, and I will be happy <laughs> forever. <laughs> Very relatable. Has anyone ever been sprayed by a skunk? No, no, but my it dog never has. has. Yeah. Oh. It was horrendous. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! I have as well. Oh. Wait, where were what you? What was the situation? <laughs> was it your fault? <laughs> oh, it was definitely my fault. Oh. <laughs> uh, I was. I, w I went out to the coast of Massachusetts uh, in Gloucester late at night one night because there was like a chance of seeing the northern lights mm. on this day and mm -hmm. it's a relatively dark area so there was like in terms of where, where I live it was a pretty dark area um, l very little light pollution cause on the peninsula anyway I was walking down the trail out to the coast and I was like, who, why did someone leave a boot in the trail? Oh. So I up to this boot thing that I thought in the dark night looked like a boot, but it was uh, a skunk, and it sprayed my leg. Oh. <laughs> so I had to. I was with a friend, and we hung out, but I had, and we didn't see the northern lights. And then we had to drive home, with, uh, and I had to put my pants and my shoes in the trunk and <laughs> drive home with my underwear. <laughs> so my, you know, so do you like right. just wash the clothes a couple of times, or is it just in the trash? Um, no, I washed the clothes a couple of times. The pants. I like I left the shoes outside like for a couple of weeks. Oh. Uh, luckily, yeah, it could have been a lot worse, but um, yeah, not fun. Oh my goodness. But pretty funny now when wow. I look back. So if I could have any like non non domesticated like a pet. It's not normally a domestic animal. <laughs> I really want it to be a skunk. Mm -mm. Yeah. Uh -uh, uh -uh. A little skunk. Mm -hmm. I hear they're super cuddly and they're like smart, but they're more affectionate than cats. I've heard they're amazing pets. 
Yeah. yeah. My cat too. is very, very affectionate. I lucked up. So you you never know sometimes. You get the luck of the draw with the cat. <laughs> <laughs> I got to film some baby would, skunks. They were very oh, adorable. Oh, so adorable. I would never, like, I would never steal a skunk from the wilderness. But if there, if there was a skunk <laughs> that, like, like needed a little one. rehab right. and just And it couldn't get let back home. into the wild or something. Yeah. And I would, <laughs> I would take it and I would name it Cousteau. My diesel explorer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what about Wasn't the possibility of getting sprayed, though? They de-skunk. They de skunk. They, they, de they, de oh, oh, <laughs> they, they do? They, yeah, they take yeah. out their scent oh, glands. That's that sad. That's All those ones. Appalachian country wow. boys can tell you, like, de skunked skunk, or, yeah, de skunked, de glanded skunks oh, are my goodness. a fairly common pet. Oh, yeah. Wow, you learn something new every day. But you want to go about that the humane way. <laughs> Which is my only rehab skunks in my life. <laughs> so Trevor, what's your All right, shall we go? Let's go fast. Let's go fast. Trevor, what's your skunk story? Uh, I was coming home, I was in Vancouver and coming home late after a night of whatever. Um, <laughs> and uh, I got to my fence to go into my yard and I opened the fence and right behind the gate, there's a, like a total non-see-through, you know, six foot tall gate, seven foot whatever. And right behind the gate was a skunk. Oh. So I opened the, opened the, I don't know, opened the door a foot gap and I see this thing and I'm like, ah, slam the gate shut. <laughs> and then I could smell that it sprayed, but I thought I'd maybe dodged it. So I just walked away and walked around the block, but no, I got it full blown. <laughs> oh. And it was, it was late night and I was leaving at 6 a.m. the next morning for a, several days sailing trip oh. Oh, nice. so i like showered and everything and left all my clothes just on the porch and that didn't work so i tried to go to sleep but then now my bed sheets stunk oh. so i couldn't oh, sleep and, and like yeah oh. i had to go to like some 24-hour store and buy like gallons of vinegar oh. <laughs> then, what, oh. you, you like bathe in the vinegar yeah oh don't you like, always well, say I, tomato juice the tomato juice it, it is a myth Oh, okay. yeah, oh. I did a lot of homework because uh, okay. that was another common solution, and I read a couple more it web sounds pages. Sounds like a rough night. Yeah, it was a rough night. Yeah, it was not much sleep, and then there were still little bit subtle bits of it. I probably soaked. I don't know. I soaked a washcloth in vinegar and did that like three separate times, and then still had scenting of Ooh. skunk apparently the next day <laughs> when I got to the sailboat oh. for a couple of days. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my gosh! Did anyone else grow up? calling them country kitties. Nope. No. Nope. No. Nope. Hard no. Nope. <laughs> no. Hard no. <laughs> but, um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Every time we drove by one that was like, you know, had been sprayed somewhere on the road or had tree <laughs> like roadkill, I remember. Oh, man. <laughs> My family would go, ooh, that's a country kitty. <laughs> and so then funny. I thought this was wow. like a normal thing. And nobody in this room. Okay. No. Nope. 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 That's nope. just you. Turns out it's just <laughs> a weird family. <laughs> <laughs> so I, the I was wearing like a, uh, a puffy Le down Pew? jacket and oh, I had no. to leave it outside for See. a year. Yeah. Oh I can God. smell it a year later. Oh, my God. And now I think my dog can still smell it. It's been, I don't know, five years or something. <laughs> when I wear that, he comes up and gives it a really oh big sniff gosh. and sneezes. Yeah, oh. I can't smell it anymore, but it was oh it was <laughs> thorough. I washed it a half dozen times in vinegar and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, a year outside. I think there are services in Chicago. Like, their whole job is to, like, de-skunk your dog. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh. I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. Hey, Lynette. Yeah. Can I get your help dropping some targets in NAV? Yeah, sure. Um, I'd like to put two targets in based on depth. Okay. If we can, along the dive track, just as a reminder for where I want my samples on this dive. Okay, based on depth. Mm. Yeah, we don't have depth. It, um, is it possible to just use your cursor to like find an approximate depth depth along the mm. uh, presumed track, and then drop it a point? It is not. It doesn't give us depth in high pack. Okay. But we could approximate uh, based on the depth of the waypoints. We do know that. Yep. Okay. Then. Okay. 
Uh, what depths are you looking for? Uh, 1175, which is right near waypoint five. Okay. And then 1000, which is near waypoint eight. So maybe I just, we can just focus on those two waypoints. That might be the way to do it. We're at about okay. 1,300 meters, heading down to 2,000, if anyone's wondering. I'm wondering. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's wondering and doesn't already know. <laughs> In fact, about Vancouver Island, there are no skunks. That sounds like an so? unfun fact because Vancouver, or because skunks are adorable. Yeah, but they're stinky. <laughs> I lived in Vancouver for several months, and that was enough for me to get skunked. Oh my! Enough gosh. for me to lose interest in skunks. <laughs> also, for the people that don't know, Vancouver is not on Vancouver Island. When I went to Texas A&M, the golf course um, was full of skunks. They would all come out at night. So if you're like walking across campus at night or taking a shortcut to the golf course, you'd come upon one in the dark like that. And it's just suddenly you facing off with a skunk. So was the skunk will always win. The skunk will always win, I've learned. Were they used to people enough that they wouldn't spray you? They wouldn't. We would kind of have a little like standoff mm -hmm. and usually I would just make a big arc around wherever they were <laughs> avoid it they can control how much they spray too can they really it's not all like an all or nothing thing but maybe the babies can't I'm not I sure about say. that probably. yeah I think but even like a full-grown adult can decide how much yeah. based on how spooked it is and it's a very caloric intensive or energy intensive process to oh. prepare for that so they really try to avoid it they don't, oh. they don't want to spray. Huh. Because it takes all, like a couple days to rebuild, depending on how, or hours, days, whatever, a while to rebuild, depending on how intense the spray was. That was so essentially the skunk question. would be defenseless for a few days then until it rebuilds. Yeah, I think. Okay. I think. So yeah. I think you'd want to choose wisely. Beth, can you see high pack? Yes. Okay, so um, it looks like waypoint five is 1176 meters. Yeah. Um, so I just labeled that on there. Waypoint eight is 1012. Yep, um, that's close enough. Okay, all right, excellent. So I just added a little extra annotation to yep. those. And I've added in information into the science portal for Dwight and Val. That? Okay, what is a reminder. That? Oh. Oh, Skunk yeah, what was that? <laughs> Skunk ink. Yeah. <laughs> Skunk ink. Squids are just like sea skunks, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> so are slime stars. Yeah. That's very true. <laughs> My only skunk encounter was in Utah at a very trafficked camping site and we woke up to a skunk like walking around us um, not scared of us at all and it got on top of my friend because um, we weren't sleeping in tents and it was like trying to get into her sleeping bag and Aww. we were all screaming <laughs> and it was just like hanging out and one of my friends was um, under a tarp and the skunk went under the tarp because it wasn't sealed on the bottom <laughs> and he started screaming everyone was screaming and it just stayed like looking for food was oh. not scared of us at all that's so funny a couple of the people i said wanted to bear spray it we were like don't no. bear spray oh my God. <laughs> don't that's bear the worst spray idea it. ever that is such a bad idea then it will be spray. bear spray and skunk spray oh. which would be horrible we, oh my nobody gosh. bear sprayed oh my it thankfully <laughs> but oh we my had God. like <laughs> what a bad decision <laughs> yeah there, it was it it was a bad idea um but we had like three skunks around us the whole night it was ridiculous I've only, I think I've only probably seen one at like those little like petting zoos they take you mm. to when you're younger. I don't think I've ever seen one just like out in the wild. 
There are so many skunks on the UNH campus. Like anytime really? you're walking around at night, like you're gonna see a skunk. We had that yeah. same thing. It's I everywhere. don't know why. Yeah. I think it's college campuses. We had the same thing, like getting to my dorm. We had to run the, the skunk gauntlet between like the theater <laughs> department and another <laughs> academic building. It was crazy. The Sometimes skunk you'd get like totally gauntlet. stymied and like have to walk like all the way around and you know. Do you know the skunk gauntlet? Well, there, were, there, there was a family of skunks that essentially lived in sort of like this drain piping, oh. that, you know, <laughs> in between these two buildings. And yeah, to get to my dorm, you had to go through between these two buildings and then up a hill. And like if you went all the way around, you had to go up even a larger hill and then back down and back up the hill. And uh, so, yeah, that was. Oh, my God. Anyway, there were these skunks and every night it was the skunk gauntlet. <laughs> Oh my gosh, That's I feel crazy. like every campus has to have like a signature. Signature <laughs> skunk it family. Was just a signature animal. We didn't have oh. any. We had, it was definitely always dodging droves of lizards and lizards. Droves. Wait, wait, where, did, where did you go to school? I went to school in Miami. Ah. Droves of lizards and um, peacocks. You That's know, what? as you do. Peacocks, <laughs> always. Oh man, the old peacock. They play. didn't attack you, but they would just kind of be like right there in front of the dorm doors. You know, you just kind of like slide by so you could get inside. And ducks, lots of du ducks, lizards, blue crabs. Sorry, Miami is very <laughs> blue crabs, ducks, lizards, and um, wait, peacocks though they're not necessarily like native to Miami, right? Or like what's, what's going know. on with the peacocks? I don't know, but they always are around. They're aggressive too, aren't they? They can be, but they usually were pretty chill if you kind of just, you know, minded your business. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. But it was always nice because they would usually, I guess the males anyway, put their feathers out, so it was always pretty. And then every now and then we'll get a manatee coming through the canal. That is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> it was very, it was like a freaking zoo. Peacocks and manatees. Classic camp. <laughs> very tropical. <laughs> Huh. My campus had rabbits. Ooh. But like way too many. Oh. They were a real problem. <laughs> they were digging into the electrical wiring. Oh, they wouldn't yeah. move if you were walking across the field. You could like accidentally step on a rabbit. Oh. And, and that's so they fun. shipped them to Texas. <laughs> <laughs> no, stop it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they dropped them and shipped them to Texas. Oh my gosh. Hmm. It looks like some of the peacocks in Miami were relocated after terrorizing residents. <laughs> <laughs> According the to peacocks, FBR. No, the peacocks on the University of Miami campus were chill. But it does seem like but how they... They're around a lot. How they got to South Florida is a mystery. Yeah, I have no idea why. Guys, I would not want to be attacked by a peacock. Yeah. I'm just going to tell you right now that, like, I might rather be sprayed by a skunk than be attacked <laughs> by a peacock. I think really? <laughs> yes. I mean, those are large birds. Yeah, they are very large birds. In, in Boston, we have, we have wild turkeys that, like, roam yeah, residential neighborhoods. Yeah, I was just going to bring that up. Like, every year there's, like, a story, like, a woman finds turkey in home and smashed window. Oh, my God. We yeah. have turkeys as well, and <laughs> there's a flock. And, like, I've, I've been watching them for years, and, you know, every spring, you know, little poults and so on. But anyway, I watched male turkeys fight over a female and like they got out spurs and like leaping in the nice. air. Huh. It was terrifying. Crazy. Um, I would not, no, I would not want to be attacked by a peacock or a turkey. The, they'll like go, at, they'll like just go at your car. They'll oh like, my you pull gosh. Out a parking spot in like in the neighborhood. They'll just be like pecking at your no. hubcaps. Like, that's, that's, <laughs> not, like move. that's terrible. That's not that. The, like the <coughs> police department and the the neighboring town had to like issue like a here's what to do if a turkey is being hostile like <laughs> spray it with a hose like get a rake and like use it. <laughs> like, oh. I've never actually had one be hostile to me. Oh like, my gosh! Know, but um. spraying a turkey with a hose. Oh man. Okay. So Jeez. you're talking about spraying <laughs> or chasing turkeys with a rake? Okay. Sure. So <laughs> he's like, I got one. When they were time. doing, I, this is an article I read. They were uh, <laughs> prototyping. Uh, in the early stages of self-driving cars and they programmed a bunch of stuff and they one of the things they programmed was if it sees like the car sees something that it's not programmed for if it doesn't recognize it then it will just come to a stop that's like the safe thing and then they'll add in all these edge cases and, and they were doing pretty good and they've got whatever 500,000 miles without any edge cases and then finally they found one and the car came to a stop and they're like what what happened what was it what did we not think of 
and it was in it was a lady in a wheelchair chasing a turkey with a broom in the middle of the road. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> like, yeah, we didn't plan for that. Wow. That's awesome. That's cute. The car just saw that like I don't know what this is. I'm, <laughs> I'm just gonna, gonna stop. stop. The car's like, wait, we gotta, we gotta see this. We gotta just <laughs> this tell is, this one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm invested in this story now. I'm just gonna pull over so we can watch. <laughs> I'll just pull over. Not gonna help. <laughs> so good. Yeah, I wonder what my turkeys are doing right now. Uh. Your turkeys? My turkeys. Yep. I have this whole flock that I follow. Oh, that's cool. Are they in like the forest or just in the town? Uh, I live pretty close to the city center, but there is a cemetery across the street from me, and they, it, you can't hunt there. Um, so anyway, the, there's a whole flock of turkeys that you know roam this cemetery, and um, yeah, every year. Huh. Um, interesting. Or all year, I get to watch these turkeys, and it's interesting, kind of noting turkey behavior and like what happens seasonally, and yeah, I have a lot of fun with this. <laughs> <laughs> I love that everybody's coming in with these animal facts from their hometowns. Here in Colorado, we get lots of skunks. But I think the worst animal that lives here is the wind scorpion. Don't look it up if you're an arachnophobe, the stuff of nightmares. What? Oh. <laughs> Noted. Wind. Will not look that up. I think Shelby's and like I'm currently looking it up right now. <laughs> and I'm an arachnophobe. I hate it. <laughs> but I have to know. Must know. So I love oh, yep. that yep. like what it. kicked off this whole thing was the fact that our prim had smelled like a cucumber <laughs> last night in the lab and then suddenly we're down this rabbit hole of skunks and porcupine and peacocks and turkeys and um, and scary spiders called wind scorpions. Yeah. Sun, sun spiders. Oh. Yep, that'll do it. Yep. Nope. <laughs> Nope, nope, nope. Nope, nope, nope. Just shut that <laughs> Google tab real quick. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, like, my brother used to chase me around the house with Granddaddy Longlegs. Oh. And I, I'm it was very traumatic yeah, for me. Yeah, Granddaddy Longlegs. I've never heard Granddaddy Longlegs. <laughs> oh, what are, what are they called? No, it is Longlegs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know, that's what I was told. No, I was also called them. told that. We just called them Daddy Long Legs. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. they're Granddaddy. Yeah. Multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> I stand by that. The so legs were extra long. I don't know if you know <laughs> I think they are Granddaddy Long Legs. Granddaddy Long Legs. Because they are large <laughs> <laughs> and in charge. I've never had a problem with, like, turkeys or peacocks <laughs> but i had an aunt growing up who had a little farm with with peacocks on it but she also had roosters Ooh. oh they're nasty animals the roosters Mean. were the worst they would send us outside to like my parents would send us outside to like go play and enjoy the farm and like give the adults some quiet time right. for a little bit yeah and we would, my sisters and I would go out and this rooster would like chase us around this pond just in circles. I it believe like it. Vicious attack rooster. Oh my and gosh. And so they'd send us out, we'd get chased by the rooster, we'd come in like half an hour later just totally exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> Your parents were like, yes, success. Yeah. Go to sleep, take a nap. Take a nap. <laughs> Don't get rid of the evil rooster. Has anybody else been bit by a goose? No. no. Yeah. Okay. Bit by a goose? Yeah. Bit by yeah. a goose. Wait. No. <laughs> what? These are all, can also be quite mean. Yes. Are and mean. will chase you. I've seen videos you. of children being chased by geese. Yeah, yeah, I've been chased by geese. Never got, they never won though. Yeah. No. <laughs> too fast. Maybe I was too slow. I don't know. <laughs> but was similar it? story to uh, Ashton's there. My grandparents lived next door to a farm and so... Uh, they did not have a farm, but the neighbor did. And um, we'd go over there to, like, pet the horses and, you know, gather chicken eggs. And they also had geese. And, yes, I think I was three or four and got bit by a goose. Traumatic. But I still love birds. <laughs> so I don't know what that says about me. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh no, someone said they were chased by a porcupine before. Interesting. Really? How was that? Did they get away by strolling? I know, I was like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm trying to picture that in my head. One time I was hiking and this deer, usually you see a deer in the woods and they run off before you even see them. You only hear them running away, but it just started to walk at me. I got freaked out. Was it like full grown? Was it a buck? It was not a buck. It oh, okay. Was, yeah, but it was good. It was good size. It was white big enough. White tail deer. Yeah, I picked up a big rock. I was ready. You're ready. I was like, I was like, <laughs> it's just coming at me. <laughs> deer can deer can mess you up. Yeah. Yeah. I had a moose follow me, and that was really oh, that is scary. terrifying. It didn't wow. run though, so it was okay. But it was like on a hill above me, and it just like walked. As I walked on like the hiking path, it walked above me, like staring at me as I went oh, through this clearing. Yeah, it was no. really freaky. That'll yeah. do it too. Mm -mm. That's scary. Or did you want bubble cam? Sorry, I think you adjusted, and I immediately changed it for a gauge check. No, I. I oh, you didn't adjust. Okay. Never mind. I imagine that. Oh, I made this bigger. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Moose are huge animals. It's a cow with a lift kit. <laughs> Terrifying, but beautiful. I stayed at a guy's house in New Zealand who had a pet goat that he found. He does not a farm; it's a pet. He found it while hiking, mm -hmm. <laughs> and <Huh>. the goat <laughs> just followed him for a while. Oh, he's no. like, oh, it was a like a very, very, very young baby goat. And then he's like, "Well, I can't just leave you all alone." So he took the goat home, and then put a diaper on it, and it was inside the house for a year or so until it outgrew the house. And then now it lives in the yard and just headbutt stuff all the time. <laughs> oh my gosh. You gotta like run away from it in the yard because it'll just headbutt your knees. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I have a Ouch. friend who bought yeah. one to be like a companion for his lab. Like his his like Labrador He retriever. didn't just want another dog? <laughs> no, he needed to go. Good question, Shelby. I mean, come on. Logically. Go, go straight to... Okay. Interesting. That, that was... That scared me. I what was that? Was it's Whoa. not tether. Not tether. It's just. Anyway, how'd the dog goat companionship go? Huh? How did the dog goat oh, companionship yeah, yeah. go? <laughs> oh, they were like best buds. What? It was oh, super good. weird. Apparently, this is like kind of becoming more of a thing where people get goats for their dogs because the goat, like, <laughs> cleans up the grass and mows the back lawn huh. and keeps and the dog company. I heard you don't want, you don't want to have one goat because they're so social. Yeah. They, yeah, you want to have at least two goats. They like you. having the dog though. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I went camping in Maine on this like farm that's on the coast and they also have like really nice wooded campsites but um, they have activities you can do and one was like baby goat hiking. So you get to like hike with baby goats. Aww. Super fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. That's yeah, that I do that. I have a friend in Montana and her uh friend uh does uh, does trips, yeah, hiking with goats. And so anyway, we were just, you know, out for a casual thing, but like she took her goats hiking and they are pack goats also, so they will carry camp gear and Things oh. like that up into the mountains, and they, they just forage that. along, and they love it. They were so excited. It was kind of mm, cool. late winter, and so things were just starting to kind of peek out, and that those goats were so excited to like nibble and be out and frolic, and yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, and I was surprised they didn't try and run off. They would just you know walk the trail in a line. Hmm. Yeah. Cool. goats. That sounds so fun. It's always nice to like enjoy nature with more nature. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Throw some animals in there. Oh, 
it probably For folks watching, we just passed 1,868 meters. So getting close to our 2,000 meter goal. Apparently a group of turkeys is called a rafter or a gang. Did we already know that? That's interesting. Group of turkeys. Oh yeah. This dive will be 16 hours total for the viewer wondering. Bottom and safe. Ah, uh, sure. You can see bottom. Yep, here we go. Okay, you can spin now. Okay. And you're coming down a little fast. Yep, thank you. It's important to come down slow when you're doing the spin, otherwise the tether will get up on top of you too. Okay, good to know. All right, we have reached the bottom.
Can I have a bubble on craft, please? Ashton, can you confirm that uh, port side is, is off? off? Thanks. <laughs> I'm gonna mess with my lights a little bit too, Steven. Oh yeah? Yeah, I have okay. them all on. Oh, I see. Okay, we are going to go dark for a moment. And white balancing. And we are good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, whenever you guys are ready for a ship move, let me know. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking it might be worth keeping the winch cam up there right at the start because we're right in that zone right now. Okay. Let's do that. Yeah, let's just do that for the next, I don't know, 100 meters or something, which will come pretty quick. Okay, are we doing anything to start or are we just going to start making our way up the slope? Um, first, can you tell me if you're feeling any current down here? Mm, maybe very slight right to left, but okay. this much. Yeah, not much. Okay. No. Uh, yeah. Um, this rock looks pretty rubbly, um, so I'd like to go up a little bit just to see if we see something a little more intact. Roger that. Can I have um, a front porch, please? But uh, probably our yeah. first objective will be collecting a rock sample for Val. Oh, understood. Okay. Looks pretty steep. Do you want to take 30 meter steps? Let's do 30, yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Everybody ready? Yes. Yeah. Oh, it is ready. Let's rock and roll. Oh, ready. Ready. Bridge, nav. These do look like interesting pillow formations, though. Can we move five zero meters bearing two six zero, please? Thank you. Bridge nav. Sorry, can we make that three zero meters? Thank you. Whoops. Trevor, do you mind panning right and left a little bit? I don't mind. Let's do it. Is that a fish, fish. there hovering? I think so. Oh. It's like still, yeah. Nice spot. Wow. Steep. Wow, that is, yeah, wow. So we're looking down hmm. into the east. That's All right, yeah. coming back left. Yeah, okay.
Someone's wondering, is there anything specific you're looking for in a rock? I guess our f first one for Val, I guess. Yeah. Trevor, if we can kind of follow this line. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Didn't mean to use the chart. Follow the porcupine, porcupine line. line. Porcupine line. It's a hedgehog, Sorry. not a porcupine. This, this line. <laughs> that line, Raj. Um, some of these look like they might be intact pillows that are maybe broken in some spots, might be uh, suitable for sampling. For your question, Shelby, I definitely can't give a perfect answer, but I know for Val, we look for more like angular shaped rocks. I was and wondering that too, yeah. For Beth, we look for smaller, like more cantaloupe sized mm. um, rocks. So right now I think we're looking for a rock for Val, so kind of that. Angular. Val angular. said she wants a, uh, wait, was it was it you Beth or Val that wanted raw potatoes? It was Val that wanted Val. raw potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> Not baked potatoes. It looks like there's a sea pen there, or maybe oh, a yeah. two worm. Oh, there's maybe some more over here. And some up in the yeah. corner as well. Okay. Maybe can we just maybe get a worm. snap zoom on some of those? Yeah, you betcha. Okay, go ahead, zoom. Hmm. Looks tubey. Yeah, it yeah, looks, looks tubey. Yeah. All right, two worms. Shrimp. Shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> Making an appearance. They really should have their own documentary. I think it would be very fascinating. Oh, yes. Stephen, that's all you. <laughs> Day in the life of a shrimp. <laughs> Where's he going? Yeah. I've kind of lost that line there, Beth. Yeah, it's okay. We'll just keep going up. We are up early. Yep, it's about five, a little, little after five thirty, here. On the ship but that never on sleeps. The ship, on the ship that never sleeps. Ooh. Oh, the shrimp. It really is like, hey, like, look at me. I do see. It's like, <laughs> why are you camera dancing? On, I'm swimming. dancing. It is ready. Yeah, yeah. I love that little you. move it just did there. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> yes, I, we shrimp. don't even need shrimp. <laughs> anyway. Oh, oh, oh! Excuse we don't me. deserve you. We don't deserve you, shrimp. <laughs> He's chasing me. Follow me. Uh, See, you? He's trying to take us somewhere. Is there a shrimp on zoom? Is there a shrimp on zoom button? Uh, yeah, I had to press the, <laughs> the, the don't zoom button there. Um, I, can we pause the ship's move and look in here a little bit? Yeah. Sure. Bridge nav. Can we hold position? They'll please? look very attached. Maybe Thank top you. left, that little kind of. Just above, just on the left laser now. That one looks like it might be unattached, maybe. And angly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of wedge shaped. Where would you like to start, Beth? Uh, I'm still looking. Raj. Just don't have a What's definitive answer yet. White silver. I'm wondering if this piece might be suitable. Did you see what I circled, Trevor? Uh, yeah. Sure. I'm not sure if it's wedge-shaped or if that's just my imagination. Shaped like your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Steve, can you zoom in on the imagination rock? Oh, that might be too small. Is it that yeah. one? Just top of frame. Yeah. Uh, yeah, never mind. Kay. Too small. Uh, but what about this one? Ooh. I guess that's probably also small. Also small. It's the same size, yeah. I was looking at it. Um, can you uh, tilt the camera up a little bit? What about these pieces? Mm -hmm. 
They look attached under the laser, maybe off to the right. Yeah, what about that guy? We have the California shaped one, and then the one just to the right of that. <laughs> oh yeah, the one to the, either of those might be good. Okay. Bubble on craft, please. So what are you thinking over here? I think so. Okay. Do you want to zoom before I touch it? Um, I've got some stills of the area. Yeah, I don't know that we need a zoom. We'll take a zoom once we get a sample. Yeah, Roger. Well, it's loose. Yeah. And it's, is it Whoa. really large or just medium large? I don't know. Let's let's <laughs> let's see what we get. Okay. Oh no, that's all right. Okay, can you zoom before the dust comes? And can I get a porch light, please? Porch light is on. Roger. Oops. Yeah, I think that'll be suitable. Can you put it in the laser so that we can see yeah, come out a little the bit, size of it? It's about 15 centimeters. Great. Do we think that'll fit in one of the smaller compartments in the starboard bio box? Uh, I think so, as long as I orient it right. Okay. Yep, yeah, um, I'm happy with this wide. collection. Okay, you can open the box now. There's nothing. And did we get um, some stills of this area? I did. Steve, you can do a sediment zoom if you want. Oh. <laughs> Who doesn't love a sediment zoom? <laughs> Dust zoom. One four seven. Hmm. Ooh, is this gonna fit? Let's find out. <laughs> so, uh, you know for our viewers try. at home, if you're watching the quad try view, a. you can see in the lower left corner or in channel three, the manipulator trying to stow our rock sample in our bio box on the starboard side. Hmm. Oops, there oh. we go. There we go. Yep. Oh. Doesn't fit if the manip is underneath it. What <laughs> box I didn't quite... A. 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 <laughs> All right, thanks a, for that. The um, Canadian A? <laughs> <laughs> um, Lynette, we can go ahead and put back in the ship's move when Trevor's ready. Okay. I'm ready. Let's go for it. All right. Bridge nav. Can we move three zero meters bearing two six zero? Thank you. E as an A. Um, so for both our audience at home and everybody in the van, right? Last night, we determined that those brown holy rocks that we have seen on previous dives are actually pumice stones. Cool. So Pretty let's all keep our eyes peeled for that um, if we see any of those on this dive. We saw several on the dive last night at deeper depths here on Nootka Seamount. What is the significance of that? So uh, pumice is a volcanic material that's created above the sea surface uh, from oh. eruptive volcanic events. Oh. It's very, uh, a lot of air gets trapped in pumice, um, which makes it relatively light and buoyant. And so it actually floats on the sea surface and can form rafts when there's a big eruption event, which means it then travels and then eventually gets waterlogged. Um, or heavy weighted down from things growing on it and it sinks. So the rocks, the pumice that we're finding here probably was not, is not from this area. It's probably rafted here from somewhere else in the Pacific Ocean. That's fascinating. That is cool. Traveling rocks. I would say quite a journey, cool. yeah. From wherever. So not only are we looking for animals, we're looking for rocks that seem out of place.
Is there a way to track where the rock may have come from? Um, I imagine you would do it through chemistry, of the uh, analyzing the chemistry of the rock. I don't know specifically what elemental ratios you would be looking for. Is that a dead sponge, or do we think that's alive? You can zoom can in on that. Can we get a partial zoom? There's also like a white disc on the a bit left. I Oops. think it's Walteria. Ooh, sorry, bouncy. It's okay. Um, but not looking too healthy. No. Okay. Yeah. Thank Thanks. you. You can come wide. White disc. It was lower. Uh, that right in the middle of the frame there. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Careful. Anyway, it's like ver it's like uh, oriented at us. Oh well. I think it was just kind of um, a sediment patch. Okay. Stephen, it looked like as we can see here, it looks like <laughs> rocks are very tumbly. <laughs> uh, that's it looked like a little depression in the sediment. Hey Steve, is there an easy way to get a screenshot of this camera, of the winch camera? Uh, phone camera? With my phone? Yeah, just take a photo of it. Yeah. Do you want it now? Uh, anytime, yeah. Now would be good, yeah. Okay, stand by. Please. Do you want is like a close up of that spot? I'm guessing. Yeah. Okay. Done. If you leave the ladder and fire blanket in the view, that would be fine too. Uh. Okay. Fire yeah. blanket. Uh, the orange sheet square. Coming Roger. into view with the ledge. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, Trevor, can we come away from the cliff a little bit just so we mm -hmm. have a a little bit of a wider view? You betcha. Thank you. I could also record that if you ever wanted to. Okay. I think we're good for now, but that's good to know. Looks like we might have a coral here. Oh, yeah. We got time for a coral zoom. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. yeah good eye. Not exactly sure which kind, though. Bridge nav. It's not a Paragorgia. Okay, come wide, please. Can yeah, you can come wide. Three zero meters, two six zero, please. Thank you. Hmm. I wonder if that was Swiftia. Plexora. Hmm. Oh, I guess it could have been a Paragorgia also. Let's like go back and look at those zooms. Is that black spot more of those trails or something else? Or is that just shadow? Wait, no, I think it's just shadow. Never mind. Oops, I'm supposed to be farther away from the wall. Lynette, what is our um, ship move bearing? Um, I just called in 360, or sorry, 260. Yeah. Okay, yep, that makes sense. Thanks. Cool Atalanta view. Cool little yeah. seam there. Mm -hmm. And Lynette, what is our distance to waypoint two? Uh, stand by. Fish. Oh fish. yeah, little fish. Mm-hmm. Wanna do a fish zoom, Steve? Swimming backwards. Yeah. Pretty. I think that's a. a is that a tripod fish? Oh, it kind of looks like. Well, oh. it, I don't. I don't think so. Not quite. It's like a, it had a comb on its back, you know, I didn't recognize that. Beth, it's about 1,000 meters. Yeah, okay, thank you so much. Yep.
Okay, a little yeah. Chrysogorgia coming into view mm -hmm. in pink coral here. Mm -hmm. We had time for a zoom on that. Go ahead. Looks like it also has yeah an associate, maybe a shrimp in there. Yeah, okay, thank you. A viewer is wondering, can feral manganese crust form on the pumice when it finally sort of reaches the seafloor after it sinks? Uh, in theory, yes, if it had been on the seafloor for a very, very long time, mm -hmm. uh, because manganese crusts form very slowly. Mm -hmm. um, the materials that we have seen don't seem to be encrusted. Um, Got it. So, oh, there's a little floater there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A little tiny, tiny jelly. Tiny. Tiny. Sorry, buddy, next oh, time. Okay. Ooh. Anemone. Anemone. Yeah. Anemone. Beth, is this kind of the distance you want away from the wall? This is great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Let me know if you see anything with the winch. I'm not able to. We'll do. I'm keeping an eye out. Roger. So I think that fish may be a type of Macrorid. Oh yeah, the fins look, I'm looking at your picture, look very similar. That's a nice big one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's enormous. You can do a far away big one zoom, please. It's very like even. So like, it looks almost like cartoon like. To 20 <laughs> yeah. centimeters Huge. In diameter. Wow. wow. Oh, look at the. Um, it's got little. In the middle. That's pretty. Yeah. That's it almost has like perfect radio symmetry. Like, this is like a very like. <laughs> textbook. Yeah, textbook, sea <laughs> star. Thanks. All right, thank you. I like the little dangly arms. I know. Like tips. Thingly arms. Bridge now. Can we move three zero meters bearing two six zero, please? Thank you. We have a high schooler who's wondering if anybody has study tips for chemistry and biology. Chemistry Can you say that again? A uh, high schooler just, uh, they're saying if anybody has any study tips for chemistry and biology, it's hard <laughs> to to memorize everything. My tip for chemistry is to get one of those little uh, block kits or whatever where you can like put oh, together the yeah, molecules. Yeah, yeah. I was very much a spatial learner. So figuring out, oh, look at that, nice. Oh, um, whoa. We were talking about different chirality and uh, molecule so. structures earlier. That's really how I learned those things. That's a good tip. What is I that? Like that. Yes. Yeah, can we get, I think it's two different things. We could get a partial zoom on that. Oh, yeah, and that looks like That looks like debris. Like, yeah, debris. That looks like okay, debris. Can zoom in on this one, please? Okay, so yeah. we've got, uh, what are those things called? Mushroom, Mushroom coral. coral. Mushroom coral. Another one of these I pink corals. I think it's an anthemaster. It's not necessarily a mushroom coral. Oh, okay. Uh, and then the same speed. Can we get a closer zoom on the um, polyps on the coral? Uh, thank you. It'll help me figure out whether we're looking at a Swifty or a Paragorgia. Thank you. All right, come on. <laughs> is it coincidental that they're like the exact same color? <laughs> and then, yeah, can we look at whatever this debris is? <laughs> yeah, you bet. Everyone's so coordinated down I here. Know. <laughs> it's like, what are the odds? All right, Steve, debris zoom, please. Uh, it's like a dive helmet. Uh, yeah. It does look like a dive helmet. A headlight. <laughs> Someone took a wrong turn. <laughs> wow. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, great. No idea. Yeah, don't know what that is. Okay. A little sponge under that rock on the right. Oh, yeah. Cute little ball sponge thing. Good morning to one of our scientists ashore, Chris Kelly, who's joined us. For the Good morning, dive. Chris. Right, Chris uh, agreed that what we might have been looking at was an anthemastis, which I was wrong, is a mushroom coral. 
and I think the uh, um, the other one was a Paragorgia. Mm. That's full wide on Atalanta now. Thank you. Thank you. I'm coming up. Me too. It's very steep. It is very steep. Or do you mind panning right and left again, just so we can get a sense of mind. how extensive the sediment cover is? You do it a little faster than last time. All right, coming left. Herc spins very fast. It's like 40%. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's very steep on both All sides. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm like closing my eyes. Yeah, it's a little... <laughs> spin, your, spin your rolly chair as it goes. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll try that. I'll try that next Maybe. time. I try, I've been trying to give fair warning. <laughs> <laughs> Caution. About to spin fast. Here's a star. Oh. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. Maybe a slime star? Looks kind of like a slime star. We have time for a zoom. So are they just slimy all over or is like it comes out of one oh yeah, place in the, in the middle? It's that brain star. Brain star, totally, brain yeah. Star. No whiskers on this one. Uh, um, I think there are on the very tips. Is that what you're there? referring to? Are you ready for another right, move, Herc? Sure. I'm not sure about slime stars in the deep sea, but slime stars in shallow water mm -hmm. get like, if they get scared, they shoot a bunch of slime as their defense mechanism. It's gross. Can we, wait, hold on. Can you pan <laughs> back to the right? Ooh, oh, sure. actually there's another one right there. It looks like whatever that is we're looking at. Yeah, here is it is, crinoid? same thing. What is that? I'm not quite sure. It does look kind of like a stock crinoid it's coming out of the bit. sediment. Uh, hmm. Ooh, maybe oh. not. Definitely not a crinoid. Mm. Definitely not. Interesting. It's that like, is... It's kind of like a sea pen, but different. This yeah. little crown looks very interesting. Really interesting uh, black lines there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, I think that's an umbellula. Mm -hmm. Is the type of sea pen. Okay, thanks. And what was this one over to the left here? I got time for one more. I thing think it was yet. similar. Chris Kelly, yes, confirms what you're saying there, Beth. A sea oh, pen. I was right. Here. Oh, yeah, same one. Same one, yeah. Snaps in oh, there. Oh, that's different. Oh. Oh. That's what is this? That's different. Oop, sorry. I gotta go now. Come on. Hmm. Are these little things two berms sticking out this um, sediment? That's what it looked like when we looked at yeah. it earlier. It's hard to confirm with that closer examination, but they kind of have that same shape. So the other one we saw, the one that was not stocked, <laughs> looked like uh, Chris is identifying that as a mushroom coral. Oh. The stocked one we saw? Not the stocked one, the second oh, one right. we looked at. What was the first one? Umbellula. Umbellula. <laughs> <laughs> type of C pen. Reminds me of that song. Which Partial one? zoom here, please. I'm oh, sorry, Trevor. Under my umbellula. Definitely some C stars on. Nice. Whatever you see. Okay. Looks like a similar paragorgia that we yeah. saw earlier. Yeah, I and think. there's something over to the right here. Stars? Some more debris. Is that debris? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. Another part of the car headlight. Huh.
All right. Do you want to keep this? Uh, sorry. Do you want to keep this pace up or slightly faster? We or could go we slightly faster. Okay. I think this pace will turn into slightly faster. We're getting a little bit more and more. Oh. 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 Where did that come from? So Chris thought that uh, coral was a hemichorallium, not mm -hmm. a paragorgia. For the viewer wondering, yes, on Grafana, the green graph at the top is oxygen. What was the depth we started at? 1990? Is that right? Roughly? I think that's yeah, correct. Yeah, roughly. Okay. All right. Got some. Bridge nav. Time in the bank here. Can we continue 30 meters bearing 260, please? Still not feeling much current here, Trevor? No, not much. I have time, I can go dead stick a sec here. Yeah, a little bit right to left, but not much at all. Yeah, so a little bit north to south. Okay, thank you. Um, and while we're away from the edge, maybe we'll do another one of our little pan views. Roger that. So everybody beware. All right, we're close your spin eyes. a little bit. All right, a little more rocky over here. All right, that's looking left. Yeah, we'll come back and look at that animal and in a moment. you're spin right, close your so eyes. So we're looking almost directly east right there. Okay, looks like south is more interesting <laughs> along say, this yeah. wall. So maybe we just bump ourselves over a little bit to see some of those corals. You want the next move to be more southward? Uh, yeah, maybe more like, I don't know, 250, 240. Roger that. I'll let Lynette figure that out. <laughs> just for this brief moment. All right, fast Something moves are done. You can yeah. open your eyes. And then if we could get a partial on this. How's that? A couple things right there. OK, Steve, go ahead. Ooh. Wasn't that lovely? Is that a very I think it's lovely. a different type of Walteria than Ooh, we've seen on previous lovely. dives with several brittle stars. Uh, thank you for that. You can come wide. Uh, maybe a Walteria woolly? I'm not sure. Shelby, yeah, do you have a question? Oh, yep.
Ooh, what's this coral coming up? Left to right. Either one. Dealer's choice. They both look interesting. Okay. Go to the right one. That looks crying already. Whoa. And a uh, little sponge. That one looks like a crinoid for sure. Yeah, that looks like a crinoid. Okay, and can we have Is a look at the Is there a little coral? sponge on that too? Yeah, what's that little white? Ah, sorry, I'm getting dot. Right, just a little It bit. almost looks like the um, the squat lobster is holding it. Is there, I don't even see a squat lobster. It does look like a sponge. Yeah, oh, you're, more you're right, I'm just imagining oh, it. Oh, I lost it. What is this little thing? Definitely looks like a sponge, which is weird. You can come lower on Delta, please. Do you think it's a cryonoid on a sponge? It's like a tech. Yeah, it might be it's a stock spon sponge. Oh, a sponge on the cryonoid? Here's it's Kelly. a small colophagus sponge. Yeah. Oh. With a cryonoid on okay, it? Okay, thank you. Other way around. Oh. I think. The sponge is on the crinoid? Uh, no, unstock crinoid on small oh. calophagus. Yeah, roger. Cool. And then the other coral was Bridge here. Nav. That looks paragorgia e maybe. Does. Can we move three zero meters okay, bearing two four zero, please? Thank you. Um, it's funny. Very thick stalk for not very many branches. Oh, is yeah. That, is that bubblegum coral? Looks like it. Looks like two of them right beside each other. Oh, yeah, yeah. Funny. Looks like there's a cup coral on the rock behind it, or maybe it's just a broken stalk. Oh, yeah. Yeah, cup coral. Thank okay, you. we can come wide. Thank you. Oh, and another one. We oh, yeah, look at that. Victor Gorgia. Something a little different. Yeah, it might be Victor uh -huh. Gorgia. Let's have a look. What is oh. that? Hmm. It's like lavenderish. Yeah, it's almost. a nice pale mm -hmm. purple. With brittle stars attached. Okay, thanks. They've all been a bit more pale down here, haven't they? Hmm. Paragorgias are slightly more white polyps. The viewer wondering. Can we get we a partial sorry. on this? Do we have enough time? Yeah. Put it on the brakes here. Uh, wondering about the lasers. Um, they they disappear a little bit when the water okay, gets ahead. clearer. So that might be what you're saying. Yeah, the laser tracks. The, the track, yeah. The, the okay, this looks remain. like a paragorgia with um, some zoanthids on top, the yellow. Okay, you can come Thanks. wide. like another paragorgia there. We'll keep, I think you probably need to catch up, right, Trevor? Just a little bit. Okay. Well, let's put some pennies in the bank. Mm -hmm. Pass them by another light, pale, uh, purple Victor Gorgia. Stock crying. Nope. Another one of those. Ambulula. Em yeah. Ambulula. 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 <laughs> <laughs> How do you spell that one? Somebody put the phonetic spelling in the thing. Umbelula. 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 Yeah. Um. <laughs> um bell ula. Yeah. Umbelula. Yeah. Abadia. Abada. Something to the right over there. Yep. Looks like there's another Walteria up here. If we have a chance to get a partial zoom on that. Yes, we have the chance. Might be a bit bouncy, but I'll do my best here. Go ahead. Oh, a little oh, with a little crinoid on 
on Walteria. it. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of Walteria that don't look that great yeah. <laughs> and or are broken. I've only really seen one healthy one so far. You can come wide, okay, thanks. Thank you. Oh, my stomach is thinking it's breakfast time. <laughs> One more hour until we can start talking about it. I was just about to say, what's the rule? <laughs> can we get a partial on this, please? Yes. Uh, okay, go ahead. Broken stock. Yeah. Mm. With a little shrimp. Yeah, hanging out. And a Thank you. Another Paragorgia. Look at how textured the rocks are below that, too. They're like mm -hmm. very bumpy. Botryoidal. Botryoidal. <laughs> Botryoidal. Thank uh -huh. you for that. Bridge nav. Can we move three zero meters bearing two four zero, please? Thank you. Looks like there's a little faint idea of a knoll <laughs> just to our west <laughs> in high pack. Faint idea. <laughs> All right, I think we're past the spot. Happy? Yeah, happy. Thank you. It's better. What are the breakfast options on the ship? Endless. Not yet. Not yet. Not, yet. Not yet. We'll answer that in 50 minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Give us like another hour, viewer, so we can keep our stomachs at bay. So I'm getting some fun info from Chris Kelly about the umbellula. Probably related to the word unbell, which is defined as a flower cluster in which. One stocks. more time, the pronunciation on that. Oh goodness! Really, <laughs> you gonna ask me that? Embalula. 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 Yeah. Embalula. <laughs> Balula. I think that's, yeah, that sounds good. A type of sea pen. Lots of sea pens and an ula, just so that you are aware. Also oh. from our scientists ashore. That's a good fact to remember. Yeah. Yep. You know, when in doubt with a sea pen. Yep. Ula. 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 Yep. <laughs> can we get some partials on these Chrysogorgia? Yes, we can. Okay, go ahead, please. I'll go over the other ones now. You can stay in. Great, thank you. All right. Uh, Stephen, this might be a question for you, maybe related to white balance, not sure. Sure. Um, but someone's just wondering how accurate are the colors we're seeing? Does the color shift due to the water, or is it pretty much spot on, basically? Um, 
Yeah, there might be a little bit of variation in the water, but generally since we're using the same lights all the time, mm -hmm. um, and then because we white balance, the colors should be accurate. Yeah. Cool. Um, that's why we do the white balance, so to set white as a reference for the camera, and we also do a black balance. Mm. Oh. And yeah, that's our intention is to get the most Ooh. accurate colors. Can we get a partial on Got that? It. Looks like Thanks you're already setting up for it. Zoom in, please. Is it an Ursula? It is. It does look like Ooh, tiny tube anemone. Ursula. Maybe a, like a pom pom, but it looks longer. Mm. Yeah, the tentacles are really long. Nice looking animal. Beautiful. Yeah. So we think it's an Ursula? Do you have Ursula is just our pet name. <laughs> yeah, it's not an actual name. Bridge nav. It's a tube type of tube, of an tube anemone. Mm -hmm. And I Can think we move if three it is zero meters bearing 250, please? Perhaps Perf this. Thank you. Looks like there might be a crinoid of some variety there. So we sampled a tube anemone, tube anemone on a previous dive. Looked slightly different than that one. Zoom in, please. Kind of looks a little bit like this Serianthera. Mm. Oh, looks like a black coral. Yeah, it's not a crinoid, it's a black coral. Branched. With a crab? Yeah, a squat lobster? Squat. They're very tiny. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thanks to the viewer who just joined. We um, went down to a little bit under 2,000 meters. Um, Maybe a chrysopathies coming up. Mm -hmm. Ooh, look at that anemone in the corner. Can you remind me of our bearing, please? Uh, 250. 250, thank you. Yep. Mm, maybe a little apathies. Not sure. The black coral? Yeah, I'll have to wait for Jeremy, our black coral expert, to let us know. Another Chrysogorgia going by. Gorgia, I think. Big one. That's what it looks like. Oh, it's really getting steep here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see it on the high pack as well. And Viewers wondering how does sort of the 24 hour around the clock uh, sort of hours on board uh, affect you getting back into your regular sleeping routine once you sort of leave an expedition? This is my first expedition and I have not le left yet, so <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's tricky. Yeah. Uh, but I also have a six hour time change when I go home, so it doesn't it's just super 
I don't know. There's yeah. a lot working against you. I can't think yeah. about it too much. I guess it depends on when your expedition, where your expedition is versus to where you're from. Because if it's somewhat near, then it may not be I have a reset, please. too bad. Yep. But Definitely don't sleep a full eight hours yeah, the first few nights. Yeah, absolutely not. Yep. No? No. No, I don't. I wake up at like one, uh, what's so? 3.30 a.m. here is uh, 9.30 a.m. back home. Well, that kind of works out, actually. I would love to sleep till 9.30 a.m. Um, I find the first day home I sleep the best. I sleep like nine, ten hours. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I start getting weird. I'm just catching up. My flight home from Hawaii is regularly a red eye, too. Yep, same. Mm -hmm. So, like, get home at 10 a.m., feeling like I haven't slept in days. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I don't sleep well on airplanes either, so no. I have an 11-hour flight home. I'm with you, Stephen. I don't sleep well on the planes, and I get home extremely disoriented, and I'll probably wake up in the middle of the night and not know where I am and think I'm here in the command center <laughs> and have those, like, Do moments that take too long to figure out where I am. Bridge nav. What's the little gray spot? Not sure. Can we have another step three zero meters bearing two five zero, please? Nothing, nothing that interesting. Thank you. I see a barnacle over the right, though. Dead yeah, center now. Oh, star yeah. with a chrysogorgia. No, yeah. that's tiny. I don't know that it's alive, though. It looks dead. Yeah, it looks dead. Okay, thanks. You have an 11-hour flight, then a two-hour drive. I don't know what I'm going <laughs> to yeah. do. Hopefully somebody will pick me up. Do you ever get wobbly land legs once you're back on? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's the worst. Yeah. I don't think I got it the first time, maybe because I was only on there for maybe like 12 or 13 days on the last ship. But this is longer, so I'm, I'm very interested to see what my just whole physical reaction will be when I'm back on solid ground. Yeah, people refer to that as Doc Rock. And, Doc um, Rock. Yeah, I usually have awful. it pretty <laughs> badly when I get back. I don't have trouble adjusting to the ship, but getting off the ship. Yeah, I get it in the shower sometimes. Oh, yeah, yeah, I only notice it in the shower. <laughs> and I'm like, why am I swaying? Yeah. <laughs> you go to yoga class right after getting off the ship. You're like, Yeah, you're like trying to do your tree pose. <laughs> <laughs> like, flopping around. <laughs> Flailing. There's another Chrysogorgia up there in the top. Yep. And is there something over to the right as well? Yep. Yeah, a little something. I can't quite oh, yeah. tell. Maybe the Something's Paragorgia we've been seeing. Oh, oh, who's that? That's something new. Can we oh. get a partial on this, please, Trevor and Stephen? Go ahead, Steve. Looks like a Norella, I think. Yeah. Primnoid. Primnoid with a brittle star. Thanks. You can come on. Thanks. Lots of brittle stars today. Of course, we're at a different uh, depth, much different depth than yesterday. Another Victor Gorgia coming into frame. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. They're definitely much paler here. I feel like we they were super deep purple in some of the other areas. Viewers wondering what factors determine how long we stay out at sea. Is that mostly governed by what wants to be accom accomplished for an expedition? And then, of course, supplies and stuff, but. Yep, it's a mixture of those factors. 
Yeah, I think yeah. the endurance on the Nautilus is what, like 40 days, days partial 45 on days? This, uh, 40, yeah. Mushroom coral. Partialing on the mushroom coral. Stand by so as that I is a limiting factor. Yep. As well as cruise objectives. Okay, go ahead. Lovely. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I've been going the wrong way for a bit, so I gotta. The, okay. That botryoidal go right rock way. is just <laughs> fascinating. <laughs> I could endlessly look at that texture. Oh, and that's a, a healthy area. Area. Yeah, I was like, that one looks. That one looks like mm. it's thriving. Can you spell that? Botryoidal. B O. Oh. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> I just looked it up. <laughs> no. I don't have to. No, you got it. Go for it. B-O-T-R-Y-O-I-D-A-L. Botryoidal. Botryoidal. Okay. Botryoidal. Yeah. It's like anti-golf ball. Sure. Yeah, anti-golf anti -golf ball. ball. Can we get a parsh? Oh, wait, no. That's just a rock. Never mind. What is that gray? We do have time now. Yes, I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. I was just smooth? curious about this rock. It had yeah. a slightly different yeah. color, but I don't know. That's what I was looking Bridge at. Bridge nav. It's it is a bonkers color. Let's zoom in on the. Can we gray, have another please? move three zero meters bearing two five zero, please? So, it looks like it has a, that demo sponge, maybe. Mm. Maybe, it definitely has a different Ooh, surface texture than some sorry. of the surrounding. Rawr, rawr, rawr. Yeah. Whoa! Is that one of your uh, single cells? Xenophile fours. Yeah. Yep. My favorite. You do favorite. There's a xenophyophore right yeah, here. Look at that single-celled organism. Look at it. Oh, <laughs> Annabelle. There's also a little brittle star over here. We're yeah. Not going to give you some love. <laughs> Got to love the close-ups. <laughs> okay, thanks. Truly true. You find so many I things know. when you... When you zoom. Yep. Whoops. Viewers wondering what's the most common thing to see at this depth. Well, we saw a bunch of tube worms when we rocks. first got down. Rocks, rocks, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Botryoidal Water. rocks. Um, we've seen a couple of different types of coral. We don't know what the most common thing is yet because yeah. this is the first time we're ever looking at this mountain, on this at this <laughs> depth. That's exciting. Look at those terraces there on the mm -hmm. left. Yeah. I think we're coming up on the proto knoll. <laughs> Can we get a partial <laughs> on this, what may be a plexoid? Yeah. Proto null. <laughs> That's you a come great down delta, please. description. Ashton, come down to delta, please. Oh, yeah, coming down. What's that stock in the upper we'll right? We'll look at right. it in a minute. You can okay. zoom in there. Pardon. Okay, so again, this looks like a paragorgia with these yellow zoanthids attached to it and a brittle star. Okay, thanks, you can come wide. And Thank then you. there's a, it looks like there's a stocked sponge just above us. There you go, coming into frame. Oh no, oh. it's a coral. Never mind. It's a bamboo. 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 The first one we've seen, I think. Yeah, the first one we've seen on yeah. this dive on so this far. Dive, yeah. It looks like maybe someone was gnawing on it. Yeah, it's one missing time. some polyps at the bottom. A little bit. Okay, you can come on. Keep moving. Is there a little We're sponge wide. on the right? Sea oh, cucumber. yeah, a little balloon. Oh. Sea cucumber. Or sea sea cucumber. cucumber. My favorite. All right, Steve, go it's ahead. It's like an electric light yeah, blue. Yeah, it looks iridescent almost. Synalactidae. Just pouring down wow. the side of that rock. Wow. <laughs> Beautiful. 
doesn't smell like a cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> True. Okay, you can come wide. All right. Getting some slightly larger fans. Mm, there's a nice ship's roll there. Yeah. Woof. Yeah. Oof. That was a good one. The viewer who just joined wondering where we are. We are exploring uh, Nootka Seamount um, in the Lili Okalani Ridge. Um, within Papahanaumoku Camry National Monument. Uh, we went down to a little bit under 2,000 meters and we're making our way up. And uh, we are using ROVs to help us explore today. Bridge nav. Can we move 30 meters bearing 260, please? Thank you. Has Nautilus ever found any shipwrecks? Yes. Don't know how many off the top of my head, but pretty sure. Nautilus has found plenty of shipwrecks. Plenty, I'm sure, yeah. I don't know how many. Trevor, have you ever been on one of the teams that's found a shipwreck? Yeah, we've found the Coast Trader off the coast of North Washington. It's oh, a cool. merchant vessel sunk by a U-boat. Oh. We found the torpedo hole. Whoa, oh, wow. Oh, that's cool. It's really fun. And did you go down with Hercules or just Argus? That was Hercules. Cool. That was one of my first cruises. First year, I think. Oh, that's, that's exciting. Awesome yeah. first cruise. <laughs> It's a memorable well, first one. My second, third cruise, anyway. Yeah, it was really a great start. So for anybody interested in Nautilus's involvement with marine archaeology, if you go to the Nautilus Live page under the Science and Tech tab, uh, there's a sub-tab for archaeology. Read about some of those expeditions. We have a partial zoom on the C pen. Yep. Go ahead. Bum, bum, bum. Shrimp chilling. The shrimp chilling, yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. That looks nice and healthy. C pen. Not exactly sure which species that is. Viewers wondering, is that um, we were looking for? Was it a branched black coral that was that we were looking for? Some specific type of black coral. Um, I'm wondering if that's still on the wish list. Uh, we did see a branched black coral earlier. We're not quite sure of the ID on it. Little cluster of Chrysogorgia yep. over there and oh a yeah. paragorgid on the boulder. Can we get a partial right in here, please? I'll do what I can. Okay, zoom in, please. OK. 
Okay. Looks like a mushroom coral. And a chrysogorgia. Thank you. Such a pale chrysogorgia. Trevor, if possible, there's this white branch back here. I know it's a bit far away, but it's a bit different than what we've looked at so far. Not sure if it's alive. Okay, go ahead. Huh. Wow. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it looks like a might have been a hemichorallium. Okay, you can come out. Thanks. But definitely not doing great now. Yeah. Such a wavy skeleton. Bridge nav. Can we move three zero meters bearing two five zero, please? Thank you. How frequently do we see different types of squid? I don't think we've seen any big squid, but I think we saw some baby squid earlier in the, the blue water. The small squid in small, the blue water, some yeah. small squid or baby squid, but um, no full full grown squids. I don't know my squid ID to tell you if it was a full grown squid. <laughs> it looked really small. I don't know. So we saw something in the blue water earlier. Um, I took lots of pics of it. Squid Perhaps like. someone can go back and look at our <laughs> squid. <laughs> can we get a partial on this primnoid? Looks 